on a beautiful day at Hampton Beach, you'll find thousands of people relaxing in the sand. If you look close right nearby, there's another fan of the sand almost jumping through the camera. Commonly referred to as seagulls. And people have learned these birds want to share your meal. come and take it out of your hand if you don't wave around like that away from them you know they're pretty um aggressive at times we caught one going down by the water with a bag of cheetos yesterday <laughs> It's pretty easy to spot their pattern. The bird seeks out an unattended bag and then investigates with his bill. Well, you can't leave your food unguarded. I mean, the seagulls are, they're hunters. They're hungry. They're always hungry. Experience has taught people like Alfred Henderson, even if your feet are up, your guard is up. Have you ever lost a sandwich that way or chips? No, no, because I... Uh... I'm real particular about my food, so. I, <laughs> you know what, I, I don't come here to share food with seagulls. We've all heard about food thefts, like seagulls snatching entire sandwiches or slices of pizza right from people's hands. Sometimes it's captured on camera. Remember the lobster roll heist in Maine? There are also stories of gulls taking keys, whole bags, even medicine from beachgoers. Oh, I always go to the beach. I love it. Always took my kids to the beach. Teresa Frank of Exeter was enjoying a beach day like this when she saw a seagull snatch something from an unattended bag nearby. I got up because the seagull took the lady's medicine, heart medicine. It was in a bottle, in a medicine bag. So she gave chase right into the water. I followed the seagull and collected the lady's medication. I got a little wet, but she had her medication. The reality is these interactions are more about misunderstandings than malfeasance. First off, so-called seagulls are actually known as just gulls in the scientific world and often can be found far inland. They're very common. Um, they used to be even more common, but right now there's hundreds of pairs nesting out on the Elsa Shoals. Pamela Hunt is a senior biologist for New Hampshire Audubon. She says New Hampshire once had far more gulls when there were more landfills in the state decades ago. These highly intelligent birds will eat just about anything, including trash. But their natural diet is often seafood. They mostly will be catching, you know, marine invertebrates. You'll see them dropping clams on parking lots and getting the yummy clam up from the inside. You'll see them walking around the mud flats, pulling up um, worms and other critters. So how'd they get so good at taking our food? Gulls can live for 20 years or more, and over that time, experience teaches them to add human food to their menu. They are very smart. They've adapted well to what we have, what humans have brought to the beach. Patrick Murphy is chief of State Beach Patrol. His big message to visitors, limit your food to humans only. People shouldn't be feeding the seagulls. We see that a lot, and we ask people to stop when we see it. Feeding them can create bad habits. You're advised to look for ways to secure your beach snacks to keep these crafty crooks from breaking and eating. They know who is most gullible. Out here, you can't just wing it. 
sure your kids are good at chasing these birds away, but they can only last so long. We were advised the best defense, the nemesis of every go, is the almighty cooler. Well, we brought a cooler to put it all in, or we'll just stay nearby the food. If you bring a bag, seagulls can get in the bag. So you want to put that in a backpack that's zipped up or have it fully secured in something other than a plastic bag. Well, you just have to put your food in the cooler because they can smell those chips. My suggestion is just uh, when you're done eating your food, put it in your cooler, lock it down in your book bag, and don't feed them. Please don't voluntarily feed these birds because uh, the whole family's going to come join in. <laughs>